everybody. So <laughs> I'm guessing you're probably wondering where I am right now. This is not my usual camping location, is it? Uh, I'd rather not say exactly where I am, just for suffice to say that I'm close to uh, Musulamu Campground again, up in that area. <clears throat> I'm up in the Green Mountain National Forest, one of the dispersed camping sites. Uh, there's uh, quite a few of these all over the forest there. I urge you to go find your own place to stay. That's why I'm not going to say exactly where I am. But uh, it's a fun little place to visit here. I get nobody else around me. I got this whole place. Well, a few bugs here, but <laughs> I'm sharing the space with some bugs. But otherwise, I got this whole space to myself here. And uh, brought some firewood along with me, as you can see. Got four bundles, kiln dried. So it's all perfectly legal to bring with me. A nice fire pit right here. Different than what I normally would have in a campground. Obviously there's no cooking grate or anything like that on it, but we'll make it work. I'm here for two nights. Uh, so, should, should be interesting. Oh, another new addition to my camping setup, thanks to my brother. I now have a bicycle dirt bike or mountain bike. And I said before that I've wanted to get one. Now I have one. He, he bought a new one, had this extra bike, it needed some work, so he let me have it. So needed to fix up the gearing, uh, the brakes, things like that. Most of it just needed some alignment and stuff like that. And now it's working pretty good. So this is my first time out with it, so we'll be trying it out here. Probably just uh, focusing on the uh, forest service roads so I learned to ride it, things like that. But should be interesting anyway, so I've been wanting to add a bike to the setup. Right now it's kind of a nuisance because I have to keep it inside the living space, but <laughs> eventually we'll be putting a rack on the back of the van here, and we'll be able to carry it with me that way. But in the meantime, well, like I said, we're here for two nights, and then we're heading down to uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts there for the Northeast Ham Exposition. Big ham radio convention in uh, Massachusetts, and we're going to stay overnight there Friday night into Saturday morning. Saturday morning we attend the ham fest and then Saturday afternoon I head home. So that's the plan for this trip. So first we gotta finish getting things set up here before we lose the light and I am hungry so I gotta get some dinner made. So good morning from the Green Mountain National Forest. Uh, sorry I didn't shoot a lot of video yesterday. It's uh, as usual I rolled in late. <laughs> it's hard to get moving. It seems like every, every time I have a trip coming up there the day before I plan on having that day before to get everything put together and ready to go, I end up working all day. <laughs> it just always happens. Uh, the, the, the fun of being self-employed and running your own business there and everything else is that work comes in when it comes in. So it uh, seems to happen every time. So consequently, I didn't shoot a lot of video yesterday because I got in after six. I had to set up the campsite, had to make dinner and things like that. And the light was already disappearing. So. So we didn't shoot a lot of video, but we got a little bit in. You saw the bike and everything, so we'll be taking that out for a ride today. And uh, probably get the drone up in the air for a while, it occurred to me. This nice big site that I'm in here, I can launch my drone right from where the van is parked. It's going to be awesome. Something I've never done before. i got to get into, hopefully, uh, before it rains. <laughs> so we're going to get the drone up in the air, we're going to get the bike out on the trails, we're going to do a little bit of hiking. We got a busy day ahead of us, uh, probably multiple videos to cover all this stuff too. But right now, it's time to make some breakfast. Yeah, one of my uh, YouTube videos wouldn't be complete without a cooking segment, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, so after the uh, episodes in the uh, earlier trip there where I had that uh, really small frying pan that uh, was belonged to my uncle's that I inherited, I grabbed the slightly larger one. So yes, I now have three cast iron frying pans in my collection here. So, <laughs> lots of the cast iron cookware in this van, so I got quite a bit of stuff here. So finding a place to put this stuff is becoming a challenge here. So we've got to build some cabinets inside, but anyway. So today we're just going to try to make a simple uh, single egg omelette in the smaller frying pan. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of bacon in it, a little bit of sausage, a little bit of ham, lots of cheddar, and a single egg. So, I wanted to try it in a smaller pan and see how it goes. So let's try this out. I firmly believe every good breakfast starts with bacon. 
that's what we're going to do. Ooh, two slices should probably be enough for this. And breakfast sausage. There we go. That cooked up. Then we'll start making the egg up. Bacon and sausage are done. So now we're going to work on making up the egg. You one egg, one egg on it. minute. Cheese. Yes, I'm making a mini carnivore's armor. That's what I'm making this morning. Bacon and sausage. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Looks it worked better than I thought. It's gonna be good. So I'm washing dishes in a different way than I normally would do. Usually I pull out that uh, propane water heating system there that uh, takes some time to set up and uses batteries and a pump and all that stuff and quite a bit of propane. So I'm trying things a little different this time. So first I'm heating water up in my little teapot on the butane stove. It only takes a few minutes to get some warmth into it. And I've got the dishes in my uh, sink table. And that drains right down to, bucket, to the bucket down below. And strainer there and I'm just washing them, pouring the hot water on them, using it that way. And when I'm at a uh, regular commercial type campground there I have a uh, picnic table I can set up the whole dishwashing station here. Here I've got limited table space because all I have is these two tables that I brought with me. So I wanted to set it up there where I had a little bit more room to work with because that he water heating system would have taken up a lot of space. And also this is a good way of practicing washing dishes this way because if I at the end of this trip, I'm going to be staying inside the van one night uh, in a parking lot. So I'm going to be doing a night of parking lot camping before I head home. And there's no way I can set all this stuff up to wash dishes outside. So by using the uh, teapot and butane technique, I can actually wash my dishes inside the van. It, it's still probably going to make a mess, but <laughs> it'll work.
nice and warm. Good. Oh, that's actually a little too warm. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Got a forest fire. A campfire going someplace. And it's not me. Okay. I'm dumping the stuff in the woods. I'm using the bio suds stuff here, the camp suds, to wash the dishes this time. And just do this. Let's rinse the soap off. And as much as I hate to use our paper towels and things like that, I am pre-wiping some of this stuff down with a paper towel first. Just to get like all the food particles and stuff off so it doesn't uh, make a bigger mess of the uh, washcloth. And also conserve some water too. And I wipe it down with the washcloth, get the soap on it. All clean. And then I rinse. This will work until I have a, a sink and things like that inside the van. This is an easy way to wash dishes and it will conserve water, which is important for me. So I've had my breakfast, I've washed the dishes, cleaned up, brushed my teeth, all that stuff. Now it's time to get started on today. And uh, yeah, it's about time. It's around noon time, so time, time we get out and start doing some stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is dump the trash. Now, unlike most dispersed campsites, this one's close to a uh, National Forest campground, and they actually welcome you to come use the uh, trash services there uh, when you're staying in one of these free sites. Mainly because they prefer you put it in a dumpster than dumping it out into the woods like unfortunately so many people do. So this campsite's actually surprisingly clean. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. From the stories I've seen, I've never tried a dispersed campsite before, but from the stories I've seen online and things like that of people coming into these sites, they're, they're a mess. People just throw their trash everywhere and dirty toilet paper and things like that. I don't see that here. This site's clean, and I'm happy about that. That's rare. So, either the campers that come here are cleaning up after themselves, or somebody's come through here and cleaned the site up. But one, one way or the other, this is nice, and I'm going to make sure when I leave it's better than how, I, how it was when I came in here. That's an important fact for me. But right now we're going to dump that trash out because the bag is already getting pretty full and it's got uh, smelly coffee grinds and other things in it that I just want to get rid of. Uh, less smell, less tracting of animals. I won't be able to do this at other dispersed campsites. I'll have to hold on to my trash somehow, but as we build out the van it will get more prepared for that stuff. So anyway, so we're going to make sure the van's locked because there's no security at these sites. And we're going to walk down to the uh, other campsite there and uh, drop this in the dumpster. This is the road out from where I'm camped. You can see uh, this is the uh, main forest service road that I'm staying on. So let me actually step back from the road quite a bit. Yeah, you, once you get around the corner, you can't even see my campsite. So unless somebody comes up here, they're not going to see me up there. Which is perfect for me. We did have some uh, knucklehead uh, bombing around on this road last night here. About 11 o'clock at night in some sort of a loud diesel powered truck. Coming up and down here. I'm not sure what that was all about, but it's unfortunately what you get when you come out to these kinds of sites. So, not a foul walk back to the uh, other place, so we'll check back in with you in a bit. Campground is surprisingly quiet here. <laughs> Nobody here. At least not on the uh, side where all the uh, non reservable sites are. You get into the other side with some reservable sites, I start seeing some people, but surprisingly quiet here. I'm not complaining though. Quieter the better. <clears throat> okay, that wasn't too bad a walk. Probably over a mile, but it wasn't too bad. So I got the trash dumped off, and then I did the walk around the uh, campground loop. Stopped, talked to the campground host. He actually remembered me from the last time I was here about a month ago, so that was good. Told him that I was staying down here at the uh, dispersed site. So now somebody at the campground knows I'm here. But 
Anyway, so far I'm liking the uh, dispersed camping. This is like, as I said, this is my first time staying in one of these types of sites. It definitely won't be my last. I'm really enjoying this place. Yeah, I feel uh, like I gotta secure my stuff a little bit more when I leave the campsite. But, outside of that, it's nice here. It's quiet. I like it. So this is where we're gonna end today's video. Come back on the next one when I try out the bike for the first time. Anyway, I want to thank my supporters. Help me buy some gas to get along the way. That especially goes out to you, Chris. Remember, slow down and enjoy life, and we'll talk to you guys later.